What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas, and we are rounding out the wide receiver rankings. Wide receiver rankings. There is nothing more fake exciting than wide receiver twos in fantasy football. This this video will get a lot of um. Oh nope. My wire for my microphone just slapped my keyboard like it was a little cock, like it was a little flaccid cock, and it slapped it. And it, uh, it made me switch camera angles, and we're going to go back to you. Skirt. Oh, we got double time. Tony, you can edit all of that out. Or not. I don't give a fuck. There's nothing more fake exciting than the wide receiver twos in fantasy football. Because there are a lot of exciting names. There are a lot of exciting players. They matter in real football. They matter in real football. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why some of them kind of matter, but most of them don't really matter. I'm going to give you my rankings today, all right? Yesterday was wide receiver rankings 1 through 12. So the wide receiver 1s in fantasy football, we broke them down. We talked about the biggest differences I have in my rankings per underdog ADP at the moment. If you missed that yesterday, I will link it up there. I will link it down below in the description. It'll be the first link down there, so make sure you check that out. Also, we've been doing a lot of YouTube shorts. They're like 60-second uh, or fewer videos uh, every day at 5 p.m. They drop on my channel. So these long form videos go up at 5 a.m. Eastern time. The shorts go up at 5 p.m. Eastern time. They've been doing some good numbers for our channel. So we might continue to push the limit on those and go uh, 5 p.m. And then maybe another one at 9 p.m. Something, something, something light like that. Today, we're wrapping up the wide receiver rankings videos for the summer right now. All of the rankings will be available to Patreon members as well as draft guide purchasers, all available on bdge.store. Wide receivers 13 through 24 today, the biggest differences between my rankings and underdogs ADP. Make sure if you're new to the channel, you hit the button that says subscribe. If you're Spanish, subscribo. If you're German, subscribe, spy, and uh, hit the thumbs up button while you're down there. All right, see you in a second. Have we been stalling? Oh no, did we not get that intro? I felt like that was kind of fire. All right, we're bike from the uh, from the intro. I apologize if that if that veered off at the end there. I'm not sure why that happened. Fake intern Tony might be drunk while editing these, and uh, I want to say that was his doing. All right, so we'll just we'll just go with that one. But as I was saying, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you if you don't hate the video. I want to start off this video with just just a quick like strategy, not strategy, but overall point to it. All right, because I was as I was saying, there's a lot of exciting players in the wide receiver 13 through 24 range for real football. When it comes to fantasy football, one of the most overrated things in the world is going crazy about your wide receiver twos and threes, arguing about how Tyler Boyd is so fucking valuable when his 9.8 fantasy points per game is no different than Cole Beasley's. 9.5 fantasy points per game, right? So what I did, I want to put together a little chart, okay? Based on previous six years. Six years, 2020 through 2015. So it's 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Six years, read them in wheat, baby. Wide receiver 13 and wide receiver 24. So what we did is we took the wide receiver 13 and their fantasy points per game in that year, and we subtracted it from the wide receiver 24 in the same year, and this is half PPR scoring. So we looked at, for example, 2020. The wide receiver 13 scored 13.4 fantasy points per game. The wide receiver 24 scored 11.8 fantasy points per game, all right? That's a gap between the the, the high-end wide receiver 2 and the low-end wide receiver 2, and that's a gap of 1.6 fantasy points per game difference. In 2019, the difference was 1 fantasy point per game. 2018, it was 2.4, and you could see down the list. The average difference in wide receiver two in the gap from wide receiver 13 through wide receiver 24 on average per year per annual basis EBITDA fuck the tax man is 1.55 fantasy points per game so the point is you can go nuts debating who the wide receiver 18 is versus who the wide receiver 22 is versus who the wide receiver 25 is at the end of the day it doesn't fucking matter and it doesn't move the needle on your team but we're here for fun we're here to yell about the guys we like yell about the guys we dislike, and that's what I'm going to do for y'all today. I just wanted to point out that little bit of strategy before you start going nuts and wasting your time about the middle round wide receivers because they're all the same motherfucking player. Wide receiver 13 is Allen Robinson. He is currently going off the board as a wide receiver 12. I have Terry McLaurin as a wide receiver 14, currently going off the board as the wide receiver 11. Uh, no one liked Terry McLaurin more than I did last year, and I drafted him everywhere I could. And for the most part, it worked out. He had a little bit of injury concerns. He was playing with Alex Smith. But overall, you watch Terry McLaurin, you're like, this guy's a fucking alpha on the team. He will remain the alpha 
Fitzpatrick is coming in. And I feel like people have penciled in Fitzpatrick as like, you know, this this surefire mid-range QB2, high-end QB2. And maybe that's the case for fantasy. But I'm worried that people have gotten this idea about who Ryan Fitzpatrick is as a thrower of the ball. Now, without a doubt, he's an upgrade to anything Washington had last year. He will take more deep shots. But Ryan Fitzpatrick, let me remind you, has a total of zero 4,000 yard passing seasons on his resume. I will repeat that. Ryan Fitzpatrick has a total of zero 4,000 yard passing seasons on his resume. Terry McLaurin, the number one there. Will the volume go up? I don't know. They might go more run heavy with Antonio Gibson as a lead back. They obviously bring in Curtis Samuel. They bring in De'Ami Brown. Like this is going to be a team with a lot of good weapons. Terry McLaurin, the best weapon. But does the volume go up? Hard to say. Will the deep ball accuracy be increased from last year? Will the deep ball shots be increased from last year? Yes, probably. I see him finishing around the same the same numbers that he did last year, okay? And he actually finishes, I believe, like the wide receiver 20 in points per game. So you want to get high in mighty bets. I get it. Phenomenal player. I still think the situation is not the best. So he will be my wide receiver 14. I have CeeDee Lamb as wide receiver 15, current ADP of 13. Mike Evans, wide receiver 16, current ADP of 15. The first jump up you'll see here is Deontay Johnson. I have him as wide receiver 17, underdog ADP of wide receiver 25. Woo! So we got an eight spot difference. Okay. And this is the first jump up for me in my rankings. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't signed up for underdog yet, and you're like, what the fuck is an underdog ADP? Underdog fantasy is the best place to be drafting your fantasy football teams this summer. Um, it is a beautiful platform with a beautiful mobile app. It'll be the first link in my description. It's where you could do drafts all summer that will help you be best prepared. And all of these drafts, they're not mock drafts. They're called best ball drafts where you're only doing your normal drafts, right? You do no in-season work, but that's what makes it fun. You just come back in January and collect your winnings if your team finishes in the top three places or whatever. And uh, all of the leagues have a minimum buy-in of $3, which means all of the ADP is sharp. All of the drafts are serious and you're getting your best bang for your buck. You're able to follow the trends throughout the summer. So I would do yourself a favor, go download the underdog app again, first link in the description. When you deposit $10 on there, again, these are paid leagues. You win money if you win the league. When you deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE, they're literally going to give you $25 free dollars to play with. Okay. So that's, that's literally like 12, uh, 12 man drafts that you could do right there just by depositing $10. And it's beautiful, and you're going to win some money because you're listening to my rankings. And my rankings have Deontay Johnson at number 17. Let's look at this tweet from Sammy Reed. Deontay Johnson's targets in 2020, in games in which he did not leave early with an injury, you could see the list more often than not, way more often than not, he was in the double-digit target range. When you do the averages, that is 118 Per game, Devontae Adams' 10.6 targets per game led the NFL last year. I, I, I still think we're underestimating just how much volume Deontay Johnson got last year as the target leader in this offense. His numbers last year should have been significantly better as well. He had a league-leading 14 drops, so he lo uh, he left a lot of, of meat on the chicken bone there, okay? He could have had a lot more yardage. He could have made a lot more plays he was dropping end zone balls uh, but drops are a very volatile point uh, for fantasy and we've gone over this many 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 times i'm not too concerned about it and i love this quote from from matt Harmon in his write-up of deontay johnson in reception perception go check out receptionperception.com he says and i quote if you're dinging johnson for his drop rate 10.6 percent you better keep that oh oh i love he he uses a little bit a little bit of millennial energy. He says, you better keep that same energy for universally beloved young receivers with reception, perception, and drop rates in the same neighborhood. A.J. Brown, 10.6% drop rate. Same exact drop rate as Deontay Johnson. D.K. Metcalf, 11% drop rate. D.J. Moore, 11.3% drop rate. The public just remembers Johnson's drops because they happened in big primetime games where everybody was watching. It is negativity bias. OK, so fuck your thoughts about Deontay Johnson's drops. Let's look at who he is as a player. His success rate versus coverage, man, 95th percentile in the history of reception perception zone, 96th percentile in the history of reception perception coverage, press coverage, 86. Uh, it's just ridiculous. And that means man zone press. He's got the trifecta there. He is good no matter where you put him on the field, which means you can put him anywhere on the field. He could be diverse, whereas Juju is going to flame out if you put him on the outside versus man and press. He can only succeed against zone. Deontay Johnson, you could put anywhere. So when you talk about Deontay Johnson, one, put respect on this motherfucker's name. Two, I'm betting on his talent. He is the go-to guy in this passing attack that threw the ball a ton last year, right? We all expect it to regress. I've talked about it many, many times this offseason already. You draft Najee Harris in the 
first round to make sure that you could run the ball more and run the ball more effectively. They were throwing the ball uh, in the second highest rate of any NFL team last year. Numbers are going to come down. Still think there is tons of room for Deontay Johnson personally to improve in the efficiency category. So even if the volume comes down, efficiency, I think, can go up because he is just a player who separates and separates at will. Love Deontay Johnson as a wide receiver too because he was getting wide receiver one type volume last year my next up right behind Deontay Johnson I have Kenny Galladay at wide receiver 18 he's currently getting drafted as wide receiver 26 so that's eight spots ahead of where he's getting drafted I'm a little bit higher on Galladay than consensus I think like mid to low wide receiver two is exactly where Kenny Galladay should be getting drafted he becomes the immediate alpha in this New York Giants offense I mean they sign him to the monster deal they're going to fucking shovel him targets into his face hole until he can't eat anymore. And this is the first time Daniel Jones has had a, a legitimate player to force the ball to when he's under pressure. Like the biggest problem we've seen with Daniel Jones over the last couple of years is the fact that this guy just gives the way like it's, it becomes charity time when he comes onto the field. He gives the ball away to the opposing defenses, whether it's through interceptions or through, through strip sacks. Like here's the thing when it's third down and he feels pressure. Do you think he wants to force the ball to Sterling Shepard or Darius Slayton? Or Evan Ingram was going to drop the... Like, no. When you have a guy like Kenny Galladay, who is so good in contestant catches situations, who will beat up on any of the D-backs, guess what? That's going to relieve a lot of the pressure that Daniel Jones has when he's under pressure, when those guys are in his fucking fly zone right there. So I think Kenny Galladay is going to help Daniel Jones out in more than just a... Uh, real life football term, but fantasy as well. I think both. it's just rising tides here for the Giants offense, okay? Overall... Kenny Galladay's ceiling might be capped in this offense. But listen, we saw Stefan Diggs last year. What if Galladay just rips off 140 or 150 targets, right? And I'm not talking about because it's a 17-game season. I still think of things in 16-game pace to make it easy for everybody. But what if he rips off 140, 150 targets as the number one in this offense? Like, I don't think it's out of the range of outcomes. And we've seen what he did in 2018, 2019. He had a, uh, 119 targets, 116 targets. He walked away from those seasons with 16 touchdowns overall, and he didn't play in the full 16 games. Um, he had over 1,100 receiving yards per season. So I think like 120 targets, 130 targets, 1,100 to 1,200 receiving yards and seven to nine touchdowns, maybe a little bit more receiving uh, luck in the touchdown department. And you're looking at a big season, but I think those are relative numbers. I think he's almost like um, T Higgins where like, you know what you're getting, you, except Galladay is actually the alpha in the offense, right? The range of outcomes I don't think is very wide. I don't, I don't think we'll see Galladay be a top five fantasy wide receiver. I don't think we'll see him fall out of the top 25 fantasy wide receivers, but you're getting to draft him at wide receiver 26. Galladay at the end of the day is just a baller downfield. And while you don't think of Danny Jones as being pinpoint accurate and being a big thrower downfield, he uh, he ranked very highly in deep ball uh, accuracy and efficiency. So these are a little confluence of events that might be nice for those of y'all that draft Kenny G. So Kenny G is not a guy I'm necessarily like targeting. I, I guess I am above ADP, but he's not a guy I'm fading. I think a lot of people have this idea that, you know, he's going to a shitty offense, he's got a shitty quarterback. We haven't seen him play in a little while, you know, new team, new wide receiver. It's just like, uh, it seems like a lot of bullshit that I feel like Kenny Galladay is good enough to kind of just surpass because they gave him the money to be the alpha and he's going to get alpha type opportunity and he is an alpha when he's on the field. So Kenny G wheels the fuck up. Let's talk about the Rams wide receivers. We haven't touched much on the Rams wide receivers. I have Cooper Cup at wide receiver 19. I have Robert Woods at wide receiver 20. So I've cupped one spot of Wood, uh, ahead of Woods. Cooper Cup, ADP, currently 22, Robert Woods 17. So Woods is going a full round earlier than Cup. He's going five spots in the wide receiver rankings earlier than Cup, according to underdog ADP. So apparently this is an unpopular opinion to have, which I do not think it should be. A lot of it comes down to what you think will happen in the touchdown category. Robert Woods had a big year touchdown, statistically speaking, six receiving touchdowns, monster year, but he also scored twice in the rushing department. That's been a staple of his game. They give him a lot of end rounds. We already know that. But in the receiving department, Cooper Cup should see an increase from what he did last year, obviously. Can't go any fucking further down. He's also two years removed from the ACL. We always like to draft guys two years removed from the ACL, two full years removed, and now he is that. Uh, Cup is going to see an increase in 10 zone targets. Woods is, Woods is 10 zone targets inside the opponent's 10, 10 yard line. Woods tends to be a guy who is not very involved at that part of the field, right? Every year we see him between like four or five and six targets down there, and uh, he's just not a big part of the game plan. But we've seen Cooper Cup be a very big part of that game plan kind of year over year in McVay's offense. Last year, we all those numbers dip okay kind of want to fixate here on a little bit is the 10 zone targets so when a team gets inside the opponent's 10 yard line what are their tendencies and who is the staple of those targets? Okay, last year we saw a big decrease for Cooper Cup there. Robert Woods stays relatively the same no matter what. He is a low target guy when they get inside the 10 yard line. In McVay's offense, he has never been a guy that becomes part of the game plan there, right? They don't say, oh, we're at the eight yard line. Let's look for Robert Woods to get open, right? He's a flanker guy that moves around a, a lot in the, on, in the middle of the 20s, right? It's almost like the empty calorie targets a lot of the time. 
And Cooper Cup's a guy that we've seen be a very big part of the inside the 10 yard line offense for the Rams over the over the last few years. Right. Robert Woods consistently around like four or five, six targets on the year inside the 10 yard line. We've seen Cooper Cup have much higher numbers. Last year, he had, he had five of them. He had five of them, which is a lower number than he saw in 2018 when Cup only played eight games. OK, so I'm trying to look and see what were the Rams doing when they got inside the 10 yard line last year. And this chart I put together, we looked at the last four years of the LA Rams offense. We looked at their 10 zone pass rate. Okay. So when they got down to their opponent's 10 yard line, are they passing the ball? Are they throwing the ball? How does that rank among the NFL teams? I want to look at the points per game, all that, yada, yada, yada. You could see the chart. Basically, last year, their pass rate inside the 10 yard line was 31%. That was 31st in the NFL. That was second lowest in the entire NFL. The only team lower than them, New England Patriots, obviously, because you have Cam Newton there. The year before that, they were up at 42%. The year before that, 46, 49. So you see a steady decrease. You see a steady decrease in their 10 zone passing rate. And you could ask one question as to why. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm crazy. But maybe it's because Sean McVay trusted Jared Goff less and less and less as the years went by. And you could see their points per game. OK, their NFL rank and points per game just continuously went down as the years went down. When you get inside the 10 zone, they were having much less success when they were not passing the ball. Now you have Stafford under center. Now you have an offense that's going to be better, going to score more with more trust from Sean McVay, uh, which will result in more passing opportunities when they're in a scoring opportunity inside the 10 yard line. And I think that helps Cooper Cup the most okay it feels like we're never going to get a 10 touchdown catch season out of a guy like Robert Woods but that's very much in the range of outcomes for a guy like Cooper Cup I think at the end of the day with Cooper Cup and Robert Woods like you can you can, again you could waste your time all day battling wide receiver twos who's gonna have more fantasy points who's gonna score fucking point six more fantasy points per game than the other one not gonna fucking matter Cooper Cup Robert Woods probably gonna have around the same involvement in this offense maybe within five to ten targets of each other five to ten catches of each other 50 to 70 overall like Cooper Cup will probably have more receiving yards. Robert Woods will add 100 yards in the in the rushing category. At the end of the day, give me the one with the more with the higher touchdown upside. And I think without a doubt that is Cooper Cup, all right? They added D-Jax, they added Tutu Atwell, these speedsters that I think opens up the middle of the field a little bit, right? Because every defense was crushing in on the line of scrimmage. And we saw that with Cam Akers' numbers on player profiler, right? Stacked boxes, number of uh, average number of defenders in the box against him, stacked front carry rate, whatever. The f I'm just saying fucking words right now. But you know what I mean. Defenders were in the box at an unprecedentedly high rate, okay? They can't do that if they actually have speedsters on the outside opening up the field and now they do with Deshaun Jackson 2 2 Atwell okay so I think that opens things up a little bit more for Cooper Cup to run in and out of the middle of the field and we've seen Stafford have some success with slot uh, wide receivers in the past like even fucking Danny Amendola had a good year with Matt Stafford we go back to Golden Tate's days in Detroit when he was a player so I, I don't know I'm, I'm it's just a gut feeling maybe or maybe it's all the fucking big facts I just dropped but I do like Cooper Cup I like it more than Robert Woods because of the touchdown upside all right let's keep moving down the rankings I have Tyler Lockett at 21 ADP has him at 21 Chris Godwin at 22 ADP has him 18 so I'm four spots lower on Godwin at the end of the day the more I think about this the more uh, of this passing offense I want relates to just Tom Brady and Antonio Brown pretty much just it, it, it's the, the defense is going to be so good. They're not going to have to throw the ball for it. They are going to score a shit ton, right? It's going to be wildly efficient, but I don't think the volume is going to be there. So who knows if Godwin or Evans are really going to eclipse 1100 yards receiving. I do. I think Godwin's probably the most talented guy on the field at this point at the receiver category, but give me Antonio Brown six rounds later than, uh, than these other, than Mike Evans and, and Chris Godwin, because the target share when they were on the field all at the same time together was basically in Antonio Brown's favor. Maybe not the touchdown upside, but volume, it went towards Antonio Brown a lot of the time. So when I look at the value, like, I don't know if I want to take Chris Godwin up at wide receiver 15, 16, 17, when I can get Antonio Brown again, three, five, six rounds later. And uh, since this passing offense is going to be so efficient, like you want Tom Brady, obviously the quietest 4,640 touchdown season you will ever hear about in the NFL's historical, historical shitty history. And then to round out my wide receiver twos here, I have Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Again, just like the Rams wide receivers, I'm not going to nitpick. I think both of them have good years. I think Jamar Chase has more upside. T Higgins has a better, uh, has a tighter range of outcomes here. I think Jamar Chase could blow up and have a 1,200 yard, 10 touchdown rookie season. I think T Higgins is very likely to finish between 1,000 and 1,100 yards with six to eight touchdowns, six to 10 touchdowns in that range. So it's more, uh, I think, a risk tolerance, how, how much you love Jamar Chase here because he's an extremely talented rookie. Number five pick overall last time the Bengals took a fucking wide receiver that early in an NFL draft his name was AJ Green guy was pretty damn good so that being said Chase is there 
Tiggins, uh, T. Higgins is there, and they're basically going off the board around the same spot. Jamar Chase is 20 overall in underdog ADP wide receivers. T. Higgins is 24th. I have him 24th. So with the Bengals, we know they're going to pass the ball a lot. We know uh, their pass rate in neutral game scripts is very, very high. It's leading the NFL year over year. Joe Burrow is probably going to throw the ball 42 times a game, which means a lot of volume for a lot of players in this offense. And again, at the end of the day, do not kill yourselves over trying to predict who the wide receiver 18 is versus the wide receiver 22 versus the wide receiver 24. At the end of the day, they really don't move the needle for your fantasy team. It's just fun to talk about them, all right? So I would shoot for upside more often than not. That's why I like Cup over Woods. It's probably why I like Chase over T. Higgins right now. Value play, Chase is actually going one round earlier than Higgins, so I don't hate the arbitrage play there. More often than not, we like to shoot for upside because while wide receiver 13 to 24 doesn't make a difference, if you draft the guy at wide receiver 20 that finishes as the wide receiver four, like Cooper Cup did a couple of years ago in PPR leagues, then you've got yourself a difference maker in your lineup, okay? That's the way you got to be thinking about it but i'm not really too concerned with like one for one tip for tat the only titties we're concerned with are the ones that walk down the runways all right i'm sorry we are out of here make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new we are going live for fade the public tomorrow uh, another episode i'm not even sure what we're talking about but we'll be live probably around 1 or 2 p.m eastern time make sure you hit the little bell underneath the channel so you'll get notified when we go live but you got to be subscribed first of course so hit the subscription button thumbs up while you're down there let me know what you think about these rankings and go cop the draft guide bdge.store i'm out i love you Peace.